Hi, I'm Dr. David Atley. In this demonstration video, we're going to be looking at the seasons as we experience them in the northern or southern hemispheres and what factors cause those seasons. To do that, we're going to be using Knapp Labs Season and Ecliptic Simulator. Let's get started. I've opened up Knapp Labs, so I'll begin by clicking on Basic Coordinates and Seasons and then finding the Seasons and Ecliptic Simulator. That'll open up this window that shows us where the Earth is in its orbit at a particular time of year, along with the apparent position of the Sun and the direction of sunlight, and how the sunlight looks to a particular observer. I'll start out by configuring the simulator for New York City. So I'll take my observer and move my little stick friend north to about the latitude of New York. So we're aiming for around 40 degrees north or so. That's good enough. And then let's start in mid-June. So around the time of the summer solstice, the time of year when the sun reaches its northernmost excursion across the celestial sphere. <clears throat> For a connection between the celestial sphere, the motions of the sun, and solstices, go ahead and watch my celestial spheres video located somewhere up here. Okay, so it's June 21st. We'll start the Earth moving. The Earth is moving along in its orbit, and you'll notice that the apparent direction of the sun's light is moving from reasonably far north to a more southerly direction. So it's moving generally and gradually south. Around the time of mid to late September, the sun will cross the celestial equator. So the sun will move from north of the celestial equator to south of it. On that date when the sun crosses the celestial equator, we call that an equinox. Um, so in mid-September, that's our autumnal equinox. And then now we're into late December. So now the sun is about as far south as it's ever going to go. And then, of course, as the Earth continues along, the sun begins moving back northwards again. As we move through mid-March, we get another equinox, the vernal equinox. And eventually we're going to get back in mid to late June to the sun being pretty far north again. So that's one year that's just gone by while I've been talking. Okay, so... Let's just wait a moment till we get to late June. Okay, that's good. I'll stop the simulation there. So why do we end up with seasons the way that we do? And the key to understanding this is to look at these two simulator panels on the right-hand side. There are two factors that are going on leading to hot summers and cold winters. So let's think about someone in the Northern Hemisphere right now. This red line marks the latitude of our observer. I would say somewhere between, call it two-thirds, two-thirds of that red line is in sunlight and only about one-third is in darkness. And what that's indicating is that most of that observer's day is going to be spent in sunlight and only a, sm a small part of that 24-hour day is going to be spent in darkness. That corresponds to your experience, or at least I hope it does. If you think about it, in the summertime, sun rises pretty early, say around 5, 5.30 in the morning, and then sets pretty late, sometime around maybe 8.30 or 9 o'clock, depending on exactly what time of year it is. So you spend the vast majority of your 24-hour day in sunlight and only a small part of it, maybe eight or nine hours or so, in darkness. At the same time, when the sun is pretty far north along its excursion along the ecliptic, the sun's light is coming almost straight down from overhead. And you can see that right here, is that the sunlight is coming not directly straight down, but nearly so. So when you go outside on a summer day and you stand in the sunlight and it feels like the sun is just beating down on you and trying to melt you into a pile of human goo, that's because the sunlight is coming so straight down and it's doing a really efficient job of depositing all of the heat carried in that sunlight. 
So we have lots of sunlight and it does a really good job heating the ground. And as a result, we get hot summers. But let's, through the magic of computers, go to winter. So I'll grab my earth, move it around here to, whoops, a little too far there, around the winter solstice. Now the opposite is true. You'll see the sunlight, instead of coming almost straight down, it's coming in at a very steep angle. So it's only glancing against the ground, and it's not doing a great job depositing its heat. So when you stand outside in the winter sunlight, you might feel a little bit warmer than if you were standing in shadow, but not that much. And at the same time, that red line is now mostly in darkness. So instead of getting a long day and a short night, you get the opposite. You get long nights and short days. So the sun spends very little time in the sky, relatively speaking, and when it is up, it doesn't do a great job warming the ground or the air or you, and so we get cold winters. But again, this is true only for the northern hemisphere. If I take my observer and I drag him down to Argentina, the situation looks really different. So when we here in the north experience winter, someone in the southern hemisphere in Argentina or southern Chile or in South Africa, they're experiencing the uh, conditions necessary to create summer. So the seasons are opposite in the northern and southern hemispheres. Hopefully you knew that, but if you didn't, you could convince yourself by playing around with the simulator. Go ahead and try it. What are the conditions necessary to set up hot summers? And where are they true and at what times of year? And if you want to really have a puzzler, think about what the seasons are like at the equator. When would the conditions at the equator match what you would need for a hot summer weather? What about cold winter weather? Play around with the simulator. See how seasons arise at different places on the earth at different times of year and look at those conditions like direct sunlight and long days necessary to set up hot summers, cold winters. Play around with it and I'll see you in class.